Kermogat Simon. To Falsher Ovalega Shaw and you, could I begin by extending apologies? I know Dawn has already apologised for Michelle O'Neill, but on behalf of Michelle, I want to extend her apologies for not being here tonight. As you can imagine, uh, we're at a very dangerous juncture in terms of the Brexit negotiations, and both Michelle and Mary Lou are in Brussels as we speak here tonight, speaking to uh, Mr Barney himself. So, folks, I'm conscious that the text has actually changed in terms of the name of tonight's discussion, so I'm going to just remind you what the, the actual uh, discussion is now called, because in my opening remarks, I'm going to refer to it. So it's, can the circle be squared in the UK, leaving the customs union and single market, and avoid the hardening of a border? To begin with, I'm going to address that question, because the answer is very, very simple. And that answer is no. It can't, the circle cannot be squared. The only way that we can avoid a hardening of the border is if the north of Ireland remains in the customs union and the single market under the auspices of the European Court of Justice. Europe, and to be fair to Simon and the Irish government, recognise that reality and that is why we now have the famous backstop that everyone talks about. The only people who seem to think that the circle can be squared are the British government and that of their Brexiteers. <coughs> the DUP say that they do not want to see a hard border in Ireland. Frankly, I don't believe them. For some in the DUP leadership, this is really about reinforcing partition and they will happily destroy the economy of the North as long as their union can be maintained. The backstop is not a threat to the Union. It has absolutely nothing to do with a constitutional issue. That's a separate issue which I'll address later in my speech. I'm the only elected representative on the panel today who speaks from someone who lives on and represents a border region and constituency. According to the Department of the Economy in the North, 143,000 cars and light good vehicles cross the border every 12 hours, every single day of the week. Therefore, the economic damage that any hardening of the border will bring to my constituency and that of all border constituencies is catastrophic. It does not take into the account the thousands of people who work, live, play, study and socialise on each side of the border every day of the week. You cannot say that you don't want to see a hard border, as Theresa May did last week in Belfast, and then go about and insist on a policy that delivers just that. This has been the British government and the DUP's position from the start, and it can't be done. So let me just go back to the issue of the backstop. For us in Sinn Féin, the backstop is the absolute bare minimum that needs to happen. Sinn Féin have been pointing out for months that there are many flaws in the backstop arrangements. Significant elements of the single market are not included, included especially services. There will be major problems for the all-Ireland economy and for cross-border life. Cross-border legal services financial services and credit unions will be badly damaged. Under the backstop arrangement, you may be able to purchase a car or a washing machine in Letterkenny and bring it home to your home in Derry, but the servicing contract that will come with that will not be honoured. Another issue of major concern for our party is the issue of citizens' rights in the North. The joint report in December said that both parties therefore agree that the withdrawal agreement should respect and be without prejudice to the rights, opportunities and identity that come with European citizenship for such people and in the next phase of the negotiations will examine arrangements required to give effect to the ongoing of and access to their EU rights, opportunities and benefits. However, in the current draft withdrawal agreement, this commitment has yet to be honoured. 
Jean-Claude Juncker confirmed in an answer to Martina Anderson, MEP, that the Irish EU citizens in the North will not be able to access their rights as EU citizens after Brexit. This means the loss of workers' rights, healthcare rights, human rights, and democratic rights. It's always important to contextualize what this can mean to the ordinary person on the street. So I'm going to give a number of examples. At this time of the year, many people in the north, like people here in the south and indeed further afield, are currently planning on or going on vacation. For many in the north, they choose to travel throughout Europe, be that Spain or Portugal or wherever the hot climates take them. This year, if I were to take my family to a holiday in Spain and for any reason, God forbid, either myself or my family were to, to, to be part of an accident or take on well, I would currently be covered under the Europe, European Health Insurance Card. Unfortunately, come next March, that will not be a reality. Of course, many will say that you can take out private health insurance. But what about the elderly population, or indeed those with current health difficulties? For many, it can be very expensive, and for others, it's actually undoable. So for some in the North, this may well be their last holiday. Secondly, many young people from the constituency that I represent, and indeed throughout the North, choose to study in universities like UCD and Galway. As it stands, they pay the st standard EU rate. However, after next March, they will be regarded as international students and will face charges of somewhere between 14,500 and 50,000 euros. Therefore, whilst a lot of the focus has been on the issue of the border, the issue of citizens' rights are as equally important and the commitments in the December joint report need to be honoured in the withdrawal agreement and we would urge the Irish government to deliver on citizens' rights. This October, in my home city, we will mark the 50th anniversary of Civil Rights March in Derry that was brutally attacked by the then RUC, which spiralled into the last conflict. I welcome the fact that the Taoiseach said a number of months ago that the citizens of the North will never again be left behind. But if that is to be true, then 50 years on, he needs to ensure that the citizens' rights, Irish citizens' rights in the North, are not left behind. As we have seen recently from the British Cabinet of Chaos, the prospects of a no-deal scenario have increased dramatically. The EU, quite understandably, is becoming increasingly frustrated. However, the EU and Irish government in particular need to hold firm to the agreements with the British government which were made in December and March past. The backstop is the contingency plan and, as I pointed out earlier, needs to be the bare minimum. The British strategy is very clear. They are quite simply trying to run the clock down. While strep dressing up old, already dismissed proposals as new proposals and trying to increase pressure on the EU27. We can have no backsliding from the Irish government. This cannot be the case of saving Theresa May from hardline Brexiteers and it must remain for the Irish government and the remaining EU states as protecting Ireland North and South post-Brexit. Whilst Simon was quite right to point out in terms of across the parties here in the South, we have been quite clear in our call in a united force in relation to how we progress further. I do have somewhat of a different opinion as to what Simon said in relation to the need should it come for a unity referendum. referendum. Because and despite of all our collective efforts to achieve a workable deal that avoids any hardening of the border and indeed protects the rights of citizens, 
the British government, assisted by the DUP, are determined to drag us all over a cliff. Then, I'm afraid, the issue of a unity referendum has come to a fore. The Good Friday Agreement, Foundation Stones, was on the principle of consent, as Simon quite rightly said. The people of the North did not consent to Brexit, nor did it consent to be dragged into economic oblivion by the prospect of a no-deal Brexit. The people of the North need to be given the choice as to what union they now wish to be part of. Part of the European Union, or indeed the Union with Britain. The Good Friday Agreement allows for this, and the choice needs to happen. The time for that choice is fast approaching. Guramila Mayogat. <laughs>